Hey guys, welcome to the shop. I have got some extremely exciting news. I'm stoked today. In regards to this pickup truck, parts I've been looking for, I've got a piece in my yard that I've been looking for for months. And thanks to a couple good friends of mine, I've got one. And this is gonna be such a much nicer truck. So much nicer than what it would have been had I followed my original plan. So let me show you what I've got. I think you'll find it interesting. We've got a lot of work to do but it's gonna be awesome. So let me show you what we got. So I'm gonna be honest, it's hard to contain my excitement at this moment because standing before you is the answer to my truck bed prayers, actually. I've been looking for a short box Chevy square body bed for months. I've been looking to buy new parts just to try to patch my old one together for months. Nothing's available. And good luck finding one of these, in my area anyway. They just don't exist they all rotted away and i've got a great example of that you know over here and i'm going to show you my old one first before i show you the new one that way in your mind you've got a good picture of what junk looks like and what not junk looks like not perfect by any stretch but it's so much nicer than what i had originally planned to fix so i cannot wait to break into this thing let me show you the old one and we'll get started you know fixing the new one so here's a look at my original bed you know and at first glance you know it is still in the shape of a bed and one could say ah you know it's not that bad trust me <laughs> this thing's junk it really is it needs every piece worked rotted out behind the taillight rotted out at the back of the wheel well this was really common and yes you could fix that right it is doable and I have done it but it's a lot of work rusted out above the uh, above the wheel well this side's really not as bad not near as bad as the other side but it is really thin back here because i have looked back there this is also a dual fuel tank bed so it has filler doors thankfully no wasps are behind there filler doors on both sides personally i don't like that and i was going to patch over this and work this area the driver's side of this bed much much worse than this side so let me take you over there as best i can anyway and show you that and then i'll show you the absolute worst part of this bed so here's your look at the driver's side much much worse than the passenger side really this entire wheel well area needs replaced now you can buy these patch panels and i do have a set of them but replacing this and doing this body work here if you want one straight it's not at all easy rotted out i mean i can almost fit my hand through there it's also rotted out inside of the tail socket it's been hit right here you know but the new bed's not perfect but it's so much nicer than this one now let me show you the worst part of this truck or truck bed and uh and then we'll look at the new one so when a pickup gets used for 35 years heavily this is what the beds look like wavy this one's almost rotted all the way through. It's super thin. In some areas, man, it's like pop can thin. And, you know, we've got several holes, right? You lose a small, small child through that one. Really, though, if this was as bad as the floor is, you know, I'd knock out some of the dents. I'd weld a patch panel there, and I'd spray a bed liner in this, and I'd say, good. But let me show you why that's not a good idea and why this truck bed is really get off me ant it's, it's really garbage so you're looking through the passenger wheel well towards the back of the truck and this is the floor of the truck and these support rails there's three of these that sit on the chassis the bolts that hold this bed to the to the actual frame of the pickup truck go through these channels and you can see they are just rotted you know completely out all of them are so the combination of the top of the bed floor being rotted out, the bottom of the bed floor being rotted out, the sides of the bed floor rotted out, and the fuel door, you know, just makes this too much work and not worth repairing. Could it be done? Absolutely. Is it worth it? No, it's not. So I'm going to pan you up and show you the condition of this truck bed on the bottom. It is in extremely, surprisingly good shape. Now, on the other one, you can shove your hand inside of this. It's so rotted. 
This one just a little surface rust. It obviously hasn't been driven in any really salty conditions. Back in here, they were pretty bad to rot out. Nothing to speak of, just a little little surface rust, but nothing that's you know progressed past, you know, just maybe through whatever little paint was there from the factory. All the channels look really good and you know, I don't see anything wrong with this. On a scale of one to ten, you know, it's an easy seven, this this truck bed floor. So extremely, extremely surprised that's as good as it is. Given, you know, it's from the eighties. So here's a look at the inside of the bed, right? It's not even waved that bad. And that came from hauling really heavy loads, like dumping, you know, bucket loads of gravel from a, from a front end loader or something in there, putting a ton of weight on these things. Now I can straighten what little bit of bend is in this out, but it's not beat all the pieces, as you can see. You know, it's got some dents and stuff in it because it it's the inside of a truck bed. But you get the idea. You know, once this is the major dents are hammered out of this and we put a bed liner in this, you know, it's going to look good. Even the wheel wells, not too bad. It's obviously been used, but right, you're not going to find one that hasn't, most likely. So, good shape. Still needs a little bit of love, but it's in good shape. So, another big bonus to this bed is that it came with a tailgate. And not just any old tailgate, one that's not rotted all to pieces, which is amazing to me. My old one, I was just thankful that it, you know, stayed closed and was on the truck when I got home. And didn't fall off you know, during my travels. It was that bad, really. Rotted out all along the bottom. Rotted out where the sockets, you know, were pivots on the back of the truck. I had to weld one of those back on. On and on and on. Plus it came with the insert. Now this one's not perfect. It's got a couple spots in it but it's much better than the insert that come out of mine. So go price one of these. You'll see why I'm somewhat excited that it come with one of these. And uh, you know, this one's straight. My old one's kind of like a banana and that happens when you put too much weight in the back of the truck and it folds out the tailgate. So the big bonus to this bed is that the bedsides aren't rusted out, right? I mean, yes, it's had some body work done to it. This is not the original paint. This thing was, I think, uh, like a copper color originally. It does have some filler in this bedside here. There's a crack from some filler there, but it's filler because this thing was had been dented, or at least that's my best uh, guess, right? It's not filler because it's had rust holes in it. So it's all there. It just needs some love, and I'm going to be stripping this thing completely down to the bare metal because I really don't trust the bodywork that was done before me, and I'm not going to invest a lot of time into someone else's bodywork. Right? So we're going to do a lot of work to this bedside. It's still going to seem like a ton of work to both of them, but it'll be worth it in the end. I think this is a pretty structurally sound unit and we'll tear into it and find out more about it. So here's just a little bit of the unloading footage and I want to say a huge thanks to my buddy Ron White and John Wilkie. John Wilkie brought this bed all the way up from, from Arkansas. So Huge thanks to those two guys, because otherwise this wouldn't have happened, and I appreciate it more than you can imagine. So I want to show you a little bit of this unload footage, then we'll get to working on this thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's a vented hard hat. This is a Florida sunbonnet, and you can buy them from beekeepers even today. You will not pay three ninety nine like I did for this one. Yeah. Is that a, considered a hard hat? No, it it's, is not a hard it's hat. It's just a... This is just a sun hat for huh. me to not have... Sunburn, yeah. I have giant ears, and they sunburn on the back. Yeah. The other thing is, is recently I've been doing lift truck work where the fixtures, somebody shot the glass out of them. So if you shoot the glass out of a big parking lot light fixture, yeah. what you've done is created the perfect environment for giant red wall. Oh yeah. Like there's like three feet of <laughs> absolutely dry space in there. Yeah. And and it's nice and warm for and, me. Well if if the light is still yeah. working, yeah. it's just what they want. Yeah. Uh, me and wasps, we don't get so, along. So so yeah, so this is great because like they will go for my ears. They they learned they have a memo out when I was about <laughs> six, about a hundred of them got me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. <Yeah. laughs> 
I ran from where it happened all the way home, jumping like yeah, hurdling yeah. fences, and I was like six. Yeah. You know, just run <laughs> high jumping fences. Run away from. Yeah, maybe stand over here in the corner and just kind of guide it. If when it comes down, don't just don't let it fall. Yeah, be sacrifice be yourself. Yeah, for this bed. <laughs> if it starts to fall, you cushion its fall. Okay. I know. Should we tip up more? Is Maybe. That what we need to do? Yeah. That's it. All right, let's stop it. You go down. Get outside of the bed. And once you get a hand on it, I'll do the same. Yeah. All right, here we go. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, it's gonna. Oh, the, uh, now we can uh, what about the, what about the, the oh, hood? Oh yeah, yeah. You barking at this bed, standing up in your driveway? Hmm? So this is John Wilkie. He's a friend of mine, viewer of the channel. He's from northeastern Arkansas. That's right. And he found a truck bed for me, which is awesome. He had emailed me, and then... We hired him to drive it up here and deliver it. So quite the drive, and I really appreciate it You're more very than you can Steve. imagine. Uh, I'm, I'm tickled to death to find it and being able to bring it to you and come and stand in your shop. Well, I appreciate it. Believe me, it should make this truck much nicer than what it would have been had I had to fix the old bed that come off of it. Because not only was the floor rotten, but the bedsides and everything else, tailgate, all gone. And uh, the bed that John found is in pretty decent shape. It'll make a much nicer bed for this truck. So thank you very much. You're much welcome. appreciated. You're welcome. And have a safe trip back home. We'll drive as careful as we can. That's quite uh, quite the distance. It how, is. How, how long did you spend on the road? Uh, it was pretty close to eight hours. Uh, of course, I stopped for food and fuel a couple of times, so drive time was really more like six and a half, maybe yeah. seven. All right, John, thanks a bunch. We'll be working on it quite a bit, and I'm sure you'll you'll get to see it we'll turn watching. around from what it is, yeah. All so, right, Steve. Thank you. You're welcome, brother. All right. So see this beautiful lady right here? She just got back from Harbor Freight picked me up a dent repair stud welder. Now I've used these in the past, they're awesome. Anytime you can get, get a dent pulled out as far as possible without making it a high spot, you just get a better job. Thinner body filler, right? Just makes things easier. This was on sale, 89 bucks, is that right? 89 bucks. Hopefully it works well. Picked up a couple extra packs of studs. This is a two and three millimeter, I think. So, we'll open it up and try it out, because I've got a lot of little dents to pull. Well, that's not very confidence in stealing. See that gap in the plastic housing there? I'm not sure. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. Guess I got in a hurry. So let's demonstrate this stud welder on a place, I think it's pretty much ideal for a situation like this. Dents in the top of a tailgate, you know, they're tough to get out. You can't get to the backside to knock them out. And, uh, you know, they're just hard to work. Otherwise, you'd just uh, be body filling all that and you'd have big chunks of filler on the top. So let's see if we can't pull these few dents out, make it look a little nicer. We'll go to the bottom of this biggest one. There we go, stud is welded. 
I weld it on enough. Hopefully I did. Let me grab the slide hammer. So now we have a stud welded at the bottom. Well, that didn't weld on very good. I gotta weld it on stronger than that. stud welded at the bottom of the bend. I'll stick this slide hammer on here. And then I'm just going to slowly try to pull it out. Well, this popped right off. So I'm not super impressed with this thing, although I am asking quite a bit of it to pull these little creases out. And this is really, you know, pretty thick stuff. Is it good for probably light sheet metal? Probably. But... I don't know how good it is for stuff like this. Really. See, junk. Yeah, man, that looks extremely good. So hopefully you can see that all around these wheel wells, there's, it yeah, was a factory, so it hit me right in the face. There was a factory seam sealer that's just kind of brittle, falling apart, and all of that really needs sealed back up, you know, when we go back together. Keep the goo from rotting out around these. It happened. So some of you guys may remember me talking up this little adjustable end pry bar that I picked up from KBC Tools a while back. Yeah, I was definitely impressed. Let's say that. So I went and I picked up its larger brother from KBC. So, there you go. Look how nice that thing is. Adjust it, make it do what you want at the angle that's comfortable. I like it. Boom. Wheel well. serious.
So there's little chestnut getting her uh, some sunflower seeds. Shows up bad every day. She's doing really good. So both of the wheel wheels on this thing got a little bit of rust in the in the very back. I think this could have been the way that they were treated from the factory. Maybe it was thin there, or could have been this truck bed was standing up in a field for a long time and had a bunch of the debris set in it, leaves and stuff like that. So I'm gonna take this little sandblaster, knock off this corrosion. I'm gonna knock these dents out of this thing and then epoxy coat the insides of these. So I got both wheel wells in here. I sandblasted the, the most of the rust off here. And all I'm gonna do is knock out the large dents in these things. Try to try to make it to when I shoot a bed liner in this thing, that it'll pretty much cover it and you won't be able to tell. But I got my work cut out for me, especially on this one. Now, I, most people appreciate a tool suggestion and I want to suggest these Martin body hammers. If you want some body hammers, these are just beautiful forgings made in the USA, hickory handles. This is my favorite. It's chisel end, right? nice domed, nice finish on the tip. It is a 153G is the, is the number. My second favorite that I grab out of the box, probably half the time, is the 158G. Same face, short pointed end. My third favorite, kind of a special purpose hammer, but I find myself using it quite a bit, is the 156G. Smaller face, longer skinnier back end for getting into tighter spots or radiuses right nice set of hammers i don't regret buying these at all i don't think anybody that bought them would these will last a lifetime if cared for and you know you can buy more expensive hammers you definitely can but i don't know that you'd benefit from it i think these are in my opinion about as good as about as good as you're going to get so pick you up some if you're interested I'm not working with Martin. This is just just a suggestion from a guy that bought him himself. I am just dripping sweat. It's so hot out here. It's humid, really humid. It's in the 90s and probably 135% humidity. So got this thing pressure washed, flipped it upside down, me and my son on some sawhorses, and I've spent the last hour and a half knocking dents out of the bed floor with a hammer and a dolly. And it's come out really nice. These bed floors are relatively thick and they respond really well to just a you know, hammering a dolly. You can get stuff out you wouldn't you wouldn't think would come out dent-wise. And I got most of the wave out of this thing. I still got to do a little bit of work because they wave in between these supports. You can imagine throwing firewood in the back, field rock, scrap metal, whatever. You, 35, 40 years of hauling stuff. Put some wave in these beds if they're used at all as a truck. And I got that out using a sledgehammer and a block of wood laying in between the bed rail or bed floor supports and just working it slowly and it looks looks really good this thing's going to get a bed liner sprayed in it so it's not going to matter anyway but still the time to do that work is now so i want to show you the passenger side i've already stripped down a few spots on this thing you know trying to get a image of this thing's history and the work that's been done to it it's not that bad actually but the passenger yeah the passenger side bedside has been involved in some sort of collision it's got some pretty extensive body work in it that we'll have to strip out and redo and i want to give you my thoughts behind the body work that i'm seeing and you know why it is the way it is now it has body work here 
and here on both sides and I can tell you right now that's from a rear end collision or bumping up against something and the bumper coming in and hitting you know it would hit in here and, and cause some damage and let me show you the passenger side and uh, you know tell you my thoughts behind why it is the way it is so the passenger side is by far the worst uh, side on this bed now it's been hit up here at least it looks like it has anyway somebody's definitely done some extensive body filler work whether that's necessary or not i don't know but what this appears to me the thickness of the filler is pretty thick it appears to me that this has been through some quick turnaround body shop where they don't spend a ton of time pulling dents but you know pull, working it out like a private individual would probably do trying to get the metal out uh, to where they use as little filler as possible to achieve their needs. You know, they just wipe it, block it, prime it, paint it, send it out the door. Um, I'm hoping that they just got carried away with the filler and that it really wasn't uh, that necessary. And I'm going to pull out the, whatever damage is under here a lot better than what whatever they did. They also used, this was so thick, I, block, I sanded this down, I was surprised. It didn't show bad on the white paint, but they used a lot more filler in this area than than they really needed to and you know they just didn't they just didn't do that good a job i'll, I'll be honest um this is going to have to be uh, blocked all the or sanded all the way down in an area like this if it has to be thick you know you, that's where you would use some fiberglass reinforced uh, body filler and then you would skim over top of that you'd sand it low and then you'd skim over top of that with your uh, standard filler because it doesn't like to be flexed because these bed sizes do they shake going down the road and you know years of that causes filler to break out so that's the story it's been hit up here i can't really see any other major damage on this thing so i th think we're okay but we'll strip this thing down and uh, you know get to get the full story of what's what's underneath all the paint on this. Sorry about the fan noise, but check out how much filler they have there. That's that's a good three eighths of an inch plus thick. They just they didn't spend any time at all trying to get dents out. They just caked body filler in there. That's what you don't do, right? Because it cracks and then you get rust under it. Just bad idea. goodness it's been hit hard up here on this corner right in that seam too and that makes it uh, makes it a tough repair and boy did they ever pack the body filler in there they didn't do a very good job of pulling the dent out so had i known that this was like this would i have still bought this bed absolutely i would have because it is pretty much a rust free which i mean it's not 100 percent, but it's really good as far as I'm concerned and I would have easily still still got this bed uh, knowing this but you can hide a lot under paint so I think the other side's pretty good I can see back behind there and I don't see anything nothing like this anyway uh, so what I'm going to do what I'm going to try to do first is pull out a lot of this damage that they just left pull it out see where that gets me and if I can get it to a point to where I'm happy with it I'll just you know fill it just like it was before except for with a lot less filler and um, you know rock with it otherwise if I can't get it to a point to where I'm happy with it I'll just cut this out Boop. cut it out of my old bed which is a good patch panel and uh, you know zip in zip in a new one well uh, an old used one that's good so that's my options I'm gonna first try to repair this because I think I think that's that's going to be the quickest method to get this side, uh, you know, back looking good again. So if you're a guy or a gal on a budget and you're looking for a welder, man, I can't be happier with the two 
Wellpro machines I've got. This is a 210 LCD and then the other one is a 200 ACDC TIG machine. Had zero problems. Nothing has happened to these things. They both weld beautifully. And for the money that these cost, I mean, you could have a stable of welders for the cost you'd spend on a red or a blue machine. And nothing against those. I love those machines. But, you know, if you're welding industrial, yeah. But if you're just doing, you know, off projects like me, something like this, It'll get you by just fine, or at least it has me. You know, that's all I can speak for is myself. But I wouldn't hesitate to buy one of these again, is what I'm trying to say. You know, so if you were looking for a machine that do projects like you see me doing, you know, one of these, plenty good. So like I said, I know that looks rough, and if you're not familiar with the way bodywork is done, I mean, that can look a little, it's kind of like surgery. <laughs> it's not pretty, but it's the end result that matters, and the way that it's done. So there's my template, and basically what this template is telling me is that I'm a little low right in here still, and because I haven't focused much time there, and I'm hoping I can get up in there and kind of push that out a little to give me, you know, to where I use less filler. It's pretty close. The worst about right there. Anyway, I'm going to dolly this out a little bit. And you'll get it a little flatter than what it is. Maybe uh, push it in just slightly right in this area here. This will get a you know, thin coat of filler. And uh, you'll never know. You'll never know that this was done once it gets uh, covered up. Now, also, along with the template, this only shows you the profile. It doesn't show you... Uh, you know, it's its position based on the other part of the bed. That's where the level comes in because this is relatively flat, this bed, and I can gauge from one side to the other my distance and see if uh, I need to come out anymore. So, you, you know, it's all common sense stuff, right? You just want to use as little filler as possible and, and try to do as good a job as you can do and not, uh, not take any shortcuts. So, looking pretty good. I'm definitely happy with it. So this is just an old piece of a leaf spring and because I had to cut out this section here because it was folded in, I'm using that to go up in there and I'm using that as my dog. You could call it a slapper. Some people, could, that's what they call them. But it's basically a thin metal dolly. So I can come in here. These areas that I wouldn't be able to paint them. So I've always been told it's not a good idea to push body filler through a hole. You should always weld that hole up if you, if you have the option. Because it, you can imagine, push body filler into that hole, yes, it'll, it'll stay in there for a while. And then you paint the outside, well it looks fine, but the back side of it is not painted and it's just 
exposed to the elements and moisture gets in through that body filler and around it and gets underneath your paint and then it pops out rusts behind the filler so anytime you can I think it's a good idea to, to weld up all of the holes that you're not going to use or that you had to make to you know do the repair so I had a viewer in my last week's video ask don't you like epoxy primer because they haven't seen me use this stuff in this project so far and the answer is yes I've got a gallon of it my issue with epoxy primer is that it never sands well it's not good for something that you want to spray over bodywork and then put paint over that really it's more of a protecting layer than anything else now this is my non-professional opinion from my experience it just sands like garbage and it's tough to work but that said, I still think it is an amazing product for protecting metal. So what I'm going to do with this gallon is spray it under the bottom of the bed of my truck. There's lots of products you could spray under there, but I'm going to use this because it's a great sealing agent. It's black, dries to a nice satin finish, plus it's super, super durable. So underneath of that bed of that truck, you know, there was really very little if any protection that was sprayed on there from the factory so this will just double the life of that bed if I spray it under there you know I'm making that up I don't know if it'll double it but you get the idea it'll add years of life to that bed if I coat it and protect it so that's what we're gonna do is mix up some of this epoxy primer hundred and something dollars for a gallon that comes with a catalyst this is the cheaper stuff and I bought it specifically for areas where you don't want corrosion that you're not going to see and that I don't need to sand. So let's mix up some and spray it underneath the bed of this truck. So this stuff is a four to one mix ratio. You can also cut it with a little bit of the urethane reducer if you want to, right? If you want to spray a little bit thinner, but you cannot, they don't suggest that you cut it very much. I think it's five to 10%. So it's pretty, you're pretty much stuck with, with the thickness that it is and you have to what is that huh. you have to uh, pretty much just deal with it and uh, make your equipment spray it I'm using a 1.8 mil tip on the uh, on the gun so that should do it this stuff's not as thick as the uh, super build primer that I've been spraying so it does all right I guess. Making a mess. So I really like this epoxy primer, but it, it does not perform like a high build polyester primer or anything like that. A couple good coats with this is plenty. Any more than that, this stuff will shrink back and crack you know, and uh, act all silly on you. So one good coat, maybe two, and as long as you get coverage, is really all you need with this stuff anyway. I think it's an awesome use for this under a truck bed. For one, it looks good when it dries, and for two, you know, this stuff is very, very tough in regards to you know, its water resistance and things like that. Perfectly suited probably for an old Jeep or who knows, you know, ATV frame or something that you want a good tough layer on to protect the metal underneath the paint. You know, something you're not going to sand anyway, so what does it matter, right? What if it's got a little texture in the surface or, or whatever. But I don't know. I like this stuff. Uh, don't know that I will necessarily spray it uh, on on the actual exposed sheet metal or the outer body panel sheet metal but you know some people spray their whole rides with this stuff so i don't know kind of like the way it sprays it's actually a pretty good product for the money
So that is looking pretty good. And man, that was a lot of work for a bed floor. But really, it would have been a shame not to do this, seeing as it had such good access. That, uh, that epoxy will you know, prolong the life of this bed floor very, very well. Now I'll spray the insides of these support channels. I'll spray those with the uh, with a wool wax or a rust preventative because you can't get in there, but I can with that stuff and that'll make these you know, hold up because they rusted from the inside uh, pretty bad as well. Now I don't think that I've went into any detail. I haven't given a decent explanation as to why I'm going to the extent that I am on this. Originally I did not plan to do anything to this truck other than fix what was broken on it but everything was broken. Fix the major things that were broken and, uh, you know, roll on with it. But after I got started on this and I noticed the value of these trucks, plus Elizabeth likes them. You know, our first date was in one of these. My dad drove these growing up and my brothers did. And this was the truck to have. Yours may have been Ford Dodge. Mine was, you know, Chevy Square Bodies. That's what we drove and that's what I'm partial to. Not that the others aren't good, but you get the idea. So, I just decided, man, why not make this thing last? Why not fix it? Because they're not making any more of these. Maybe make it good enough to where it'll last long enough to where it could get passed down in the family, possibly. You know, who wouldn't want Grandpa's truck that he documented on video, uh, you know, redoing? And I haven't went crazy on this truck. Some of you, I'm sure, think that I have, but we could have sent our fasteners out and had them chrome-plated. We could have powder-coated everything. But once you do that, you go to that extent, they really become, <laughs> I don't want to say useless because they're not, but you, if you have one, you know what I mean. They're something that sits on a carpeted, inside of a carpeted uh, covered trailer or your shop and your friends walk around it and talk about it. You know, they're, they're cool, but they're not something that you, you would take out and, uh, and actually use. This is to a point where you can, I mean, it's not, it's not a show truck. You could you could still use it, and uh, you know it, it's to a point to where hopefully it'll it's stable and will last. Plus, Elizabeth does not mind me working on this thing. She hasn't complained once, believe that or not, uh, about me working on this. We actually went on a date in a truck exactly like this, so they it has value to her as well. So that's kind of the reason. Plus, I own it, and the majority of the work that this truck needs. You know, it, yes, it has cost some money, but the majority of it has just been labor. And it's just my labor, which I enjoy putting into this thing. So that's kind of the reason why I'm doing this, is hopefully it'll last long enough to get passed down in the family, and it's simple enough to where it doesn't have an expiration date like me or, or you, right? This thing will keep on keeping on as long as somebody cares for it any bit at all. So that's kind of the thought. And I'm super happy to have this bed. It is in extremely good shape for, for as old as it is. Yes, it is clobbered on this side, but it'll fix perfectly fine. And this repair that I'm doing, you'll be lucky if they did as good as what I'm doing on a 2022 Silverado. So, you know, don't think that this bedside's garbage because it's not. It will fix just fine and last for as long as the other bedside. So, yeah, world is not as big as what you think. And this bed happened because of viewers, you know, people watching the videos, people keeping their eyes open because these are not easy to find. You don't find them around where I'm at because we have you know, quite a bit of salt here. Uh, so, you know, the internet has made the world a much smaller place. We're all neighbors, actually, believe it or not. Me and you, we're neighbors. We may be a little ways that way, but we're neighbors. So that's a good thing and makes stuff that wasn't possible possible. I guess that's it. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever. Much appreciated. And uh, do something like this for yourself. And I'll see you next time.